Well, good evening. Um, I was listening to a individual and work salvation don't get nobody to heaven. Can my righteousness get somebody to heaven? Could it, can it get me to heaven? Can my good works get me to heaven? Can my tithing get me to heaven? Um, can my job get me to heaven? Can my money get me to heaven? Can my church get me to heaven? Can my pastor get me to heaven? Can friends get me to heaven? I'll go maybe one step further. Can my Bible get me to heaven? If I choose to believe what the Bible says, the Bible can be a roadmap. And I have my roadmap in here somewhere, but we've all seen a roadmap before. But can my works get me to heaven? Um, nothing I can do other than the faith that I have in the Lord can get me to heaven. I can't go to heaven based on somebody else's believing. I can't go to heaven based on somebody else's actions. I can't make it to heaven on my good works. Um... There's a lot of people that feel that it's about them. Um, I've heard this said before, and I'll say it to the camera tonight. If somebody could show me how I had the ability to stay saved. I would love someone to fill me in because everywhere I read in the Bible, it's not about me. Salvation is not necessarily based on me. Salvation is a gift from God. It's a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Um, Paul couldn't earn heaven. Paul told the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do? He didn't say that to be able to earn heaven. He said that 
to please the Lord. It was his desire to please the Lord. That was his desire. That should be my desire. That should be your desire today is to simply please the Lord. If I had my earthly father back in this life, I would hope that I would have a desire to do whatever I could to please my earthly father. But I don't have my earthly father today. My earthly father passed away in 2007. So, I don't have an earthly dad today. Salvation was given by God through his son when he sent Jesus to the world. Jesus came, Jesus died, and Jesus was raised from the dead. The Bible says that he was put in a tomb, that he stayed there for three days, and God come and raised him from the dead. And about 30 or more days later, he went back to glory to prepare a place that is called heaven. And for these last 2,000 years, Jesus has been preparing that place. Because Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So the gift that God gave to man was salvation. Salvation came from, from God through his son, Jesus Christ. The only way that I can be able to take hold of the gift is to simply believe that Jesus died and that he rose again and that he's in heaven today preparing a place for his children Salvation is not based on our righteousness. Salvation is not based on our good works. Our good works is going to be rewarded for when we get to heaven, but it's not contingent on whether we have salvation or not. Salvation is a free gift of God. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. You know, I always think of, when I read that verse, For by grace are ye saved through faith, I think of a lady going in the kitchen and taking a cake, and making a cake out of the mix. She first of all has to have the mix in the box to be able to make the cake with. She goes and she adds the eggs and she goes and adds the brown sugar. She goes and adds all the sugary things that goes into the cake. She beats it all up into a, a wet mold, you might say, and she puts the cake in the oven, and it stays in the oven a length of time until the cake is done, and then the cake is removed 
and it sets out in the open to cool down. It waits a little while before the icing is applied to the cake. Some cakes you have to wait an hour or so before you cut into the cake. It needs to set. It needs to congeal. It needs to have time to cool so that the icing can be put on the cake. The icing has to be spread in a thin layer to cover the outside of the cake. You don't you don't put icing on half the cake and the other half the cake you don't put no icing on at all. No, you spread the icing on all the way around to cover the whole top. If you have to thin the cake out a little bit to get the icing to cover the cake, that's what you do. You keep rubbing it until you fill it in until the cake is totally covered in the icing. When you use the word for by grace, are ye saved? Grace is the cake mix. Grace is the cake mix of salvation. For by grace, are ye saved through faith? So the lady has to go in there and take the eggs and the and the ingredients and the labor to mix it all together. The cake can't become a cake staying inside the box. A cake can only become a cake when the ingredients are taken out and everything is mixed together and put into the pan and baked in the oven for however long it takes for there to be icing applied to the cake. So what did Paul say in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9? For by grace are ye saved through faith. So we've got faith and grace works hand in hand. The Bible says, not of works, you can't base the cake on works. Even though a cake, it takes works to make the cake. But this cake here is a cake that is not based on our works. Because Paul said it's not of works. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. And not of yourselves, it is the gift of God where that grace comes from and where that faith comes from produces salvation. So when grace and faith comes together, it produces salvation. Salvation basically is a lot like the cake. When you go and you spell it out the way I'm spelling it out, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, right there tells you something, doesn't it? Not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works not of anything that we can do to stay saved. You know what? If God depended on me to stay saved, I would be saying, Jesus, I don't really believe in you. I really don't believe in you, Jesus, because I have to stay saved. So therefore, I'm basing it on something that I do to be able to stay in right fellowship with the Lord. So therefore, what does that tell you? That tells you that you have to do something to earn it, 
when you have to stay saved. When I was born, I became a Thompson when I came out of my mother's womb. Because that was who my daddy was. I became a human being. When I was delivered from the womb, I was independent from my mother. It ain't a bit different than the verse that I'm using tonight. For by grace are ye saved through faith. What is faith? I have faith that I've got air to breathe out here tonight. For by grace... Grace is unmerited love of God. Grace is unmerited love that I did not deserve. Grace is something that you do not deserve. You don't deserve grace. But the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved. But that grace comes from God. Because it is an ever-ending grace. It's an undeserved grace. If you are here tonight and you're hearing this message, it's only by God's grace that you're hearing the word grace tonight. For by grace, God's grace... Are ye saved through faith? Faith is something that you can't see. I can't see the breath and the air that I'm breathing in this room right now. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That means you can't stay saved. You're either saved or you're not. Either this Play-Doh is in this room, or it's not. It's out of the camera's sight right now, but it's still in the room. So what does the verse say? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. Not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if I got to stay saved, that means that I've got a right to boast a little bit. Because I earn salvation. See, when you boast about something, pride sets in. And all of a sudden, you realize that when pride sets in, then you have to sort of think about that thing and you have to sort of wonder about that thing and you have to sort of meditate. You have to sort of meditate. And when you meditate, you know that it was the unfailing love of God that saves not of works, lest any man should boast. See, God knew that if he left it up to us, that we would we would have to boast. Because we would have the natural desire to go and say, I did that. Let me tell you something. For by grace, that is God's unmerited favor of God, are ye saved through faith? It's like a chain that is tied together. You got one link over here. You got one link over there. Them links tie together. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. So if you're out here tonight and you're depending on yourself to stay saved, Guess what's going to happen? 
that kind of salvation is not going to get you off the ground. Because you're depending on your own works to get you there. And you can't do that. God doesn't want you to boast. He don't want me to boast. I went a long time and didn't have salvation. I wondered about it. I've even made videos about testimonies and salvation. I'm just telling you tonight, if you or boasting about what God has done for you, then maybe you don't have the salvation that you think you have. Not a works. Lest any man should boast. So see, nothing I can do is going to earn the favor of God. Because the word grace is unmerited favor of God. Meaning you can't work for it. Meaning you can't earn it. Meaning that you can't stay saved by your own ability. Oh, can you maintain works? Sure you can. But when you tie works to salvation, that's where you're screwing up. Elderly ministry is how to contact me. You can contact me anytime. Elderly ministry is the... Contact on YouTube, elderlyministry.com is the website. You can contact me there. If I can help you, I'll walk you through the scripture, show you what the Bible says. You need to know the kind of salvation that you got, okay? Thank y'all for tuning in again.